Good evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson tonight. This is one of those moments when there's so much lying, so much relentless, bewildering lying, that it's worth taking three steps back and considering the obvious. And here's the most obvious thing. For three months, Joe Biden's voters have trashed our country. They have looted our cities, burned buildings, beaten and killed dozens of people. For three months, Joe Biden and his advisors have done their best to ignore it all and pretend it wasn't happening. The same people who lecture you that silence is violence said virtually nothing about the riots in our streets. In fact, they threatened anyone who talked about them, who mentioned the arson, the stealing, the vandalism, anyone who in any way questioned the tactics of the mob. When this show persisted in criticizing the behavior of BLM, a coalition of left-wing activist groups tried to pull the show off the air. In the end, it didn't work. Even a Democratic presidential campaign can only deny reality for so long. Most people, no matter who they vote for, despise crime and they despise violence. Even now, after months of unending propaganda, the average person has a far higher opinion of the police than of politicians, and for good reason. Voters have started to blame Joe Biden for the chaos they see outside. Suddenly, that's clear in the polls, and Democratic leaders are very worried about it. Just as during the Iraq War, our political class promoted violence to achieve regime change. Then they lost control of their proxies and destroyed an entire country. Now they're frantically trying to distance themselves from the terror they created. Sound familiar? They have no moral regrets about any of it. They're just worried that getting blame might cost them power, so they're working to shirk that blame. Today, Joe Biden's handlers flew him to Pennsylvania so he could, quote, denounce violence. They gave him a short speech to read. They allowed no questions afterward. Biden mouthed the words they had written. He blamed Trump voters for everything, all the violence, all the rioting, presumably for all the defaced and destroyed statues, too. They did it. It must have been Trump supporters who spray painted Kill Whitey on the pedestal of the Francis Scott Key Monument in San Francisco. Of course it was. Right wingers, always trying to erase American history. Biden's 12 minutes today in Pennsylvania may have been the most thoroughly dishonest speech ever given by an American presidential candidate. Virtually every word of it was the opposite of the truth. It was literally beyond belief. But there was at least one honest line in that speech. We want to highlight it for you because that line reveals what all of this is really about. Here it is. His failure to call on his own supporters to stop acting as an armed militia in this country shows how weak he is. Does anyone believe there'll be less violence in America if Donald Trump is reelected? Oh, think there'll be less violence if he's reelected? Got it? It's a nice country you have here. It'd be a shame if something were to happen to it. That's not an observation, obviously. It's a threat. And it wasn't a mistake either. It's not a line he just blurted out. That line was in Biden's prepared remarks. His campaign tweeted it out later. They were proud of it. This is the official message of the Biden campaign. If you dare reelect Donald Trump, prepare for more rioting. You think Biden voters are dangerous now? Wait till you see them in Trump's second term. Now, we'd love to pretend that's another lie from the speech, but it's not a lie. It's likely true. And Biden was right about it. Pretty much everyone understands that it is true. But still, what a thing to say out loud. What country is this? Vote for me or my people will keep blocking traffic and setting fires and hurting people? Yes, that's exactly what they're saying. They'll never put it quite that way, of course, but the threat of violence is implied in everything they do. It's starting to become clear why the people who run the Democratic Party, people who, by the way, are not at all stupid, realized very early that Joe Biden was a perfect presidential candidate. The rest of us were mocking him for being senile, but they knew they had the right guy. Biden can say things like what you just heard without scaring you. That's a rare talent. Biden doesn't seem like an extremist because personally he is not an extremist. Ask anyone who knows Joe Biden. Biden is a corporate lobbyist who represented a tiny state in the Senate for 40 years. Joe Biden doesn't want a revolution. He just wants to live in a big house and have strangers love him. At this point, Biden is too slow to be radical anyway. The people who control Joe Biden understand this perfectly well. And today they had him break the fourth wall and say it out loud. Watch. Ask yourself, do I look like a radical socialist with a soft spot for rioters? Really? Do I look like a radical socialist? Uh, no, you look like a glad handing shill for the credit card companies because that's exactly who you are. And that's why you're such an effective front man. But the people behind you are radical as hell. And we are not guessing about that. 
Biden's running mate, president-in-waiting Kamala Harris, openly solicited donations for rioters in Minneapolis. Quote, if you're able to, Harris tweeted in June, chip in now to the Minnesota Freedom Fund to help post bail for those protesting on the ground in Minnesota. Amazingly, that tweet is still up. At least 13 members of Joe Biden's staff sent money to the rioters in Minneapolis. So what did the Minnesota Freedom Fund do with the cash they got? Well, they freed a person who's being held for trying to kill the cops, murder them. They also bailed out an accused murderer and a twice convicted rapist, among many others. Kamala Harris has never apologized for doing this. She has never repudiated the Minnesota Freedom Fund. Biden, of course, didn't mention it in his speech today, but why would he mention it? He's not against it. He officially supports the idea behind it. The Biden campaign has called bail, quote, a modern day debtor's prison. Joe Biden is pledging, if elected, to end cash bail nationally in every state. What would that look like? What would happen if Joe Biden did that? Well, we know the answer. We don't have to guess because Democrats have already eliminated cash bail in New York City. And what happened? You know what happened. Criminals immediately flooded the streets. Hundreds of thousands of residents fled the city. Not right-wingers, by the way. Joe Biden voters. They left. They had to because violence surged out of control. Over the weekend, one savage tried to rape a 25-year-old woman on a subway platform at 11 in the morning in public view. You may have seen it on video. It happened on the Upper East Side, one of the prettiest neighborhoods in the country, a beautiful, formerly safe neighborhood. But it's not just New York. Democrat-controlled cities all over the country look like this now. There's no denying it or its effects. Spend an hour on Zillow and look at real estate prices. People are literally running away from cities run by Democrats, and they're going to places that aren't. That's not a guess. It's not a talking point. It's true. Yet according to the Biden campaign, this has nothing to do with the Democratic Party. No, it's all Donald Trump's fault. Watch. He's been leading. It's exactly the opposite of what we've been seeing from Trump, who's been trying to incite violence this entire summer. What? Just wait a second. Uh, well, I'll get to violence in a second. No, I'm, I'm thinking in real time. The president is inciting violence? Absolutely. He has. He has encouraged uh, his supporters to go out to be aggressive. Trump is inciting violence. Oh, right. He's the one screaming at you in the car on the way home and spray painting the F word on federal buildings and smashing windows and torching Wendy's. Those are all Trump voters. This is lunacy. It's totally false. There are lots of things you could blame Trump for, for sure. That's not one of them. So will a single person believe these lies? Well, the thoroughly beta mayor of Portland, Ted Wheeler, is hoping they will. Wheeler is blaming federal authorities for the state of permanent rioting in his city. It's gone on all summer. We've covered it here virtually every night. People are now being shot in Portland. Ted Wheeler wants you to know that's Trump's fault, too. Your campaign of fear is as anti-democratic as anything you've done to create hate and vitriol in our beautiful country. You've tried to divide us more than any other figure in modern history. And now you want me to stop the violence that you helped create. This guy, so many like this, what a total mediocrity. In his defense, he probably imagined when he was elected mayor of Portland that it would be all upside. He'd never have hard decisions to make. He'd never have to keep chaos under control. But he does, and he's failed. And now he's blaming others. Portland is as liberal a city as we have in this country. Democrats run everything in Portland. Donald Trump got 17% of the vote in the entire county in the last election. Yet somehow, Ted Wheeler wants you to know, Trump is controlling the political climate in Portland, Oregon. As always, the opposite is true. Trump supporters are, in fact, no longer allowed in the city of Portland. On Saturday, one of them, a member of the group Patriot Prayer, was murdered in downtown Portland, apparently for supporting Donald Trump. The governor of Oregon, Kate Brown, promptly blamed the dead man, <clears throat> excuse me, blamed the dead man for his own murder. Patriot Prayer was in town, Brown declared, quote, looking for a fight. Another way of saying, this man was expressing his constitutionally protected political views, and that's no longer allowed in Portland, thanks to people like Kate Brown and Ted Wheeler. You can get murdered for doing it. This man was. Here's video of the killing. Note that someone calls out the victim's location just prior to his execution. In other words, it was a coordinated hit. 
Watch. We got another right here, he screams, another Trump supporter. Just in case there was any question about the nature of the execution you just saw, and we're sorry for airing that, but it happened, we felt you should know. But in case there was any question about what it was about, the main suspect in that murder literally has a BLM symbol tattooed on his neck. If you watch the Democratic National Convention, you may be familiar with BLM. BLM is the group Democrats promoted from the stage all week. They're the movement corporate America will fire you for daring to criticize. They're the reason you're not allowed to acknowledge that all lives matter. You get fired for that too, many have been. This is the actual armed militia of the Democratic Party and they are held to very different standards from the ones you live under. In fact, the suspect in this murder in Portland has been arrested twice just this summer for unlawfully carrying a loaded gun. He never went to jail. In one case, the one in Portland, the same people who tell you how much they abhor gun violence let this man go. Then he apparently murdered someone. Joe Biden did not mention this today. BLM was happy about the killing. BLM does not believe that all lives matter. They don't say they do and they don't. They believe people who oppose them should be killed. Again, we're not making this up. Watch them celebrate the man's murder in Portland. I just got word. The person who died was a patriot transport person. Yeah. He was a Nazi. Okay. Our community held its own and took out the trash. Our community held its own and took out the trash. These are Biden voters celebrating the murder of a man who they hate because he supports a different political candidate. Again, we're not making it up. You just saw the video. He was a Trump voter, therefore deserved to die. Run the cheer. Why didn't Joe Biden mention this in his speech today? Not a word about that killing. Nor did Biden say anything about the elderly Republicans who were attacked outside the White House last week after the RNC. We showed you that tape too. He didn't mention the Trump supporters who were shot at in South Carolina recently. He didn't mention the shooting in Los Angeles yesterday that targeted Trump voters. He didn't mention the BLM rally from over the weekend in which the speaker makes clear that he considers murdering people the next frontier in civil rights. Here it is. I'm at the point where I'm going to put these police in the grave. I'm at the point where I want to burn the White House down. I want to take it to the senators. I want to take it to the Congress. I want to take the fight to them. And at the end of the day, if they ain't going to hear us, we burn them the f down. The same way I bust police in the head in New York, I bust police in the head in D.C. This is everywhere. That, that was just this weekend. It gets no coverage whatsoever. The media pretend it is not happening, but it is happening and it's lunacy. And there's a massive cost for all of us to allowing it to go unchallenged. It is unchallenged, it's never challenged. BLM can say and do whatever it wants. Democrats will never criticize BLM because Democrats never criticize their own voters, period. That's their one hard and fast rule. One way they're very different from the Republican party. No matter how dangerous the words or the behavior become, Democrats won't say anything if it's coming from someone who might vote for them. So we shouldn't be surprised when their voters take the cue and become more radical and more violent. Last week in Georgia, a man was arrested for stabbing an AutoZone employee. He didn't know the guy. He told police he, quote, felt the need to find a white male to kill. Joe Biden didn't mention that today, nor did he say anything about this. This happened yesterday in Baltimore. Watch. That clip showed up on social media with the note, white lives don't matter. Joe Biden didn't mention that. There's no sign he disagrees. The media will, of course, never cover this. Over at CNN, which is now devoted full time to covering for the rioters, one analyst tweeted that only, quote, desperate Republicans claim we have riots. Amazingly, because the person who tweeted it is not very smart, his tweet contained a photograph of a burning building. The building was burning in a riot, but whatever, ignore that. Riots aren't real. There's not much violence. You'd have to be a race to think there was. Let's be honest, and Don, you do make this point, and it's important over and over. There's very little rioting. 
like that that's actually there's very little violence it's 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 you know it but it's magnified by donald trump and it's magnified by republicans and it's to convince people that they're that people are coming for them and and that's that's just simply not what's happening oh it's not what's happening and you're a bad person if you think it does now to be fair that clip I think was recorded four days ago, three or four days ago, before the official line changed, which is actually there are riots and there are Trump riots. Trump is responsible for all this. So we've gone three months browbeating anyone who acknowledges the obvious, what's on video, what's in your city, what you may be affected by personally, the reason you're moving to Texas, can't acknowledge it. Now we've turned and we're blaming it on Trump. Ignore the evidence. Ignore the evidence. Your eyes are lying to you. There's only one reason you may have concluded that this is happening and Democrats are behind it because you've been misled, you've been lied to. You've been fed a diet of fake news by agents from a hostile foreign power that among other things, secretly controls Facebook. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Russia faked the riots and blamed Joe Biden, just like the moon landing, but more diabolical. Watch Mr. Adam Schiff explain. The Russians four years ago, Dana, exploited Black Lives Matter. They set up their own false flags online uh, to try to divide people along racial lines. Are they doing uh, and it we now? Have to, uh, uh, they are, once again, uh, doing their best uh, in social media, in their overt media, and other means to grow these divisions again. It's a false flag by Russia! Seriously? You'd like to think... In the late summer of 2020, people would laugh at that. It is hilarious in a way. On the other hand, an awful lot of blue check Democrats on Twitter believed it the first time, so who knows, they probably will again. But you gotta give Adam Schiff some credit. At least he's consistent, though he's obviously completely insane in desperate need of inpatient care. That man is hurting. But he's one man in a big party. What about everyone else running the Democratic Party? They're not insane. They're not crazy in the slightest. They're just liars. And they're more ruthless than you can even understand. They will burn down your cities and tell you that you did it. And if you don't accept that judgment, maybe they'll send BLM to your house. 